A few of us heard Andy Murray say last week that he was prepared for the end. Now, we can add that to his impressive resume of athletic accomplishments. He is a genuinely exceptional liar. He will continue to find methods to demonstrate to us how unprepared he is until the very end. He will not stop struggling, fighting, and producing those moments that leave you gasping in exasperation and saying, Andy Bloody Murray, only a small number of the roughly 1,000 games he has played and the several acts of resurrection he has carried out in the 19 years leading up to this last week of his career could compare to the one he did on Sunday night on the Suzanne Langland court with Dan Evans. For more than 60 minutes of their Olympic doubles match against Taro Daniel and Kei Nishikori, this seemed to be ending in the most depressing and unimpressive way possible. Let's go through their first round clash in some sort of order. But there are a lot of points we could cut to to show how that went, not the least of which being the five match points they faced in the final set. They lost 6-2 in a disastrous first set. Then, in front of a mostly empty stadium in the first game of the second round, Murray lost his serve for the third time. It was depressing. A moan. There's no way to go for a man who has been recovering from back surgery for 37 years and counting every day. Nevertheless, these two injured pals managed to pull themselves back into the second set, and after experiencing yet another breakdown, they repeated the feat somehow. They reached a tiebreak and prevailed, largely because of Evans. Oh my, it was not what I expected. And yet, none of that could compare to what happened next, which, given the competition's nature, meant a race to ten points. They referred to it as a match tiebreak, and we were met with such magnificent chaos. Simply put, they fell behind 9-4, to four, which equates to 5 match points. They were buried, and when Murray actually plays his final shot of this final dance on an undisclosed day in the following week, his family may think about taking their racket down as well, under a mile of concrete and in a steel coffin. Any alternative course of action would merely put them through this conflict once more. Back to those match points then. Murray, who had been serving awfully on this beautiful evening, hit an ace. He then blasted a service winner after getting the ball back in his hand. A window was open, followed by a double fault in Nishikori. 9-7. to seven. Really? Evans then produced some amazing retrieval plays to cut the score to 9-8, to eight, and they were level after a stunning volley from the same racket. After that, Evans held his serve, and the score was 10-9, to nine, match point. The few there yelled, Let's go, GB, let's go! And Murray followed suit, stepping onto a Daniel serve and delivering enough blows with an unreturnable forehand to cause holes in the air before being hit by punches. He may have killed Evans with the tight hug he gave him. I have won a lot of matches in my career that people felt I shouldn't have won, Murray said. I've always made an effort to persevere and win. Today, I couldn't have accomplished that on my own. A brief note regarding Evans. Although he was the more capable spouse in many ways, he is aware that Murray will be remembered for this. He has acknowledged as much, he is giving the doubles this tournament more importance than the singles, as evidenced by his placement on the court when he had to withdraw. The drama stemmed from his early afternoon injuries to his knee and wrist sustained while getting past Motes at Chargui of Tunisia in three sets. A day in which Jack Draper defeated Nishikori, Kem Nori withdrew from the men's singles due to injury and Katie Bolter lost in the women's singles would have been made worse had he chosen a different path. Evans, however, disliked having to take more time to heal. He remarked, I didn't want to be the one pulling out on him, which brought to mind Emma Redukanu and Murray's truncated farewell at Wimbledon a few weeks prior. Evans hauled his sore body to this game. It felt academic for a long time. Judy, Murray's mother, agreed as well. I was figuring out in my head which flight would get me home she remarked. But you never give up on him. No. It is not possible. We want to repeat the action later this week, probably on Tuesday in the following matchup against the Belgian duo of Sander Gilles and Joran Vliegen, or the French duo of Arthur Fils and Hugo Humbert. We can both say and write it. However, he won't pay attention until his racket is beneath the pavement and inside the coffin. What a wonderfully intransigent man.